Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We have switched over to the programming language C in order to program our MSP430. And we're looking at timers. And in this video, we are going to look at setting up a timer that uses SM clock as its clock source. And we're going to generate timer overflows in order to create an interrupt server, an interrupt. And what we're doing uh, through this, as we look at these timers, is we're basically trying to write programs that, that look at every different setting. So we've done one where we used A clock as the source. We looked at one where we did A clock and a different counter length. So we did a 12 bit. Now we're gonna look at uh, speeding up and using SM clock. <clears throat> then we'll look at some other settings later. So here's what we're doing. A clock is a slow clock relatively. It's 32 kilohertz. And that's good for slow things, okay? <clears throat> And you can make it even slower by dividing it down. But sometimes you want fast things, okay? So you'll notice that a clock wasn't great if you wanted to do timing events that were maybe less than a second or less than, you know, 100 milliseconds. And so to get timing counts that move much faster, you can use SM clock, which is actually one megahertz. Now, SM clock is, again, an internally generated clock. So you get this for free on the MSP430. It's built into it. Our MSP430 is the FR2355, and its SM clock is one megahertz. Other variations of the MSP430 might have a different frequency here, but the one on our launchpad board is one megahertz. <clears throat> so let's do this. I wanna set up a timer overflow where we're gonna leave the clock in 16, or the counter in 16-bit mode, and we're gonna count from 0000 up to FFFF, and then overflow, and then continue to run. And so we are going to clock it with SM clock, which is one megahertz. <clears throat> and the first thing is how long will this overflow take? Well, the amount of time on a timer is always calculated by the period of the clock times the number of counts. So in this situation, overflow occurs at every two to the 16 counts. So that's the, the maximum count value. <clears throat> and the period of the clock is now one over one megahertz. <clears throat> and so the overflow will actually occur every 65.5 milliseconds. So that's that's really fast, okay? So it's really quick, relatively speaking, to the, you know, even the human eye. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is we're going to generate an overflow. To do that, to put it in the mode where it can generate an overflow and trigger an interrupt, you have to put the mode into continuous mode. <clears throat> and then that will allow a flag to be raised, okay? We're gonna leave the dividers at one and then we'll rock and roll. The flag that we care about, the interrupt that we're, is going to be triggered, is going to be this TB0 IFG. So this guy right here is the overflow flag, and that happens to be a vector of timer zero underscore B1 underscore vector. Okay, so let's let's do it. Let's fire up CCS and file new CCS project, and we'll go ahead and give this the name C underscore timers underscore SM clock, and we're doing an overflow. Okay, we got our empty only, and boom. <clears throat> okay, so here's our main dot C file, and let's go ahead and enter some codes. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is th this example, what we're gonna do is every time it overflows, let's toggle LED one. Okay, so kind of like the last examples, but we're just toggling it at, at a different overflow period. In this one, since we're going to use LED1, we got to set up the ports. So as always, let's do the set up the ports first. So I'm going to go to port one direction register and I need to set bit one, excuse me, bit zero. <clears throat> and the reason is that we want to set port one bit zero to output and that is LED1. <clears throat> okay. And then we'll, let's go ahead and set it to, uh, we'll drive it to zero initially so the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to clear a bit clear bit zero and to clear i always go ampersand equals tilde bit zero <clears throat> and the reason i did that is bit zero is a mask that's all zeros and a one in the zeroth position but when i use an and operation to clear it i invert the mask and that gives me one 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 zero and that clears out bit zero of port one out and so this right here is going to do uh Clear P10 initially, and that's LED1. And at this moment, we got to remember the register names that we're pulling are from the MSP430 header file. The bit masks are also from the header file, 
and this is great. So these are all set up for us. The last thing to do to get the digital I.O. system on is to turn it on. So I need to go into the PM5CTL0, the power module 5, power module 5, not 4. <laughs> I need to clear and percent equals tilde. And I need to clear the bit called lock LPM5. And that's going to turn on digital I.O. This mask is bit mask is set up in the header file. This register name set up in the header file. Very nice, very readable. Let's go ahead and set up the timer. So the timer we're gonna use is we'll use timer B0. And let's go ahead and remember whenever you set up the timers, you need to write a one to TB clear in order to, to reset the timer. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go in register TB0 CTL. That's the timer B0 control register. So that's where all of our bits are, all the important configuration bits are. And I'm gonna do a bitwise or to clear TB clear. So that's gonna be reset TB0. And luckily that mask was set up for us and very readable. Now it's time to change our clock source to SM clock. And as luck would have it, they have a mask, a bit mask set up in the header file, which is extremely readable. So <laughs> watch this. TB0CTL, the TB0 control register, is where this the clock settings are, okay? The TBSSEL. And I am gonna do a bit set using a bitwise or, and I have a mask. I went to this header file and I found this bit mask called TBSSEL underscore underscore SM clock. How cool is that, okay? So we're gonna use SM clock as source. Now that's cool because that's readable. And if you didn't know that mask, uh, I, number one, I just told you, uh, but if you didn't believe me, you're like, where are you finding these masks? I mean, like, it's crazy. Well, I go into the header file and I, and I look them up, okay? So that's what you should do too if you ever need a setting uh, that I'm not covering. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is remember the in order to have overflows, so all the way up to its maximum value and go over, we need to put the mode into continuous mode. So I'm gonna do TB0 CTL, and then I need to bitwise or to set a bit, and I luckily have a mask called MC underscore underscore continuous. And look at that. So then I do mode equals continuous. continuous. All right, life is good. The timer is now configured to run off of SM clock, which is one megahertz, and that's it. It's rocking. <laughs> so now it's going. Let's go ahead and set up uh, the overflow IRQ, and here we go. ORQ, look at that. All right, IRQ. First and foremost, let's do the local enable. So here's the local enable for this uh, timer system. It's this timer flag. DB0 CTL, so it's in the same configuration register, and I'm going to set this bit called TBIE. That's timer B interrupt enable. So this is local enable for overflow on TB0. Okay, that mask luckily was in the header file and that made it easy. And now once I do that, let's do the globals. So let's go underscore underscore enable interrupt, and I wanna see this turn purple. Yes. So this is the global enable. This is for maskables, okay? So maskable IRQs. So that turns on, that allows all maskable interrupts, but only the ones that have their local enable enabled. Luckily we did, okay? And then finally, I wanna clear that flag just to make sure it's in the right state. So TB0 CTL, and I'm gonna clear. So I go ampersand equals tilde, and the mask for that bit is called TBIFG. So that's clear flag. All right, this thing is ready to roll. And now the only thing left to do is get into a main loop that doesn't do anything. So let's just go while one and let's go boom, done. So this is gonna loop forever. And that way we'll never hit that return signal. All right, so the timer set up, ports are set up, timer set up, overflow is set up. We're stuck in a main loop. And whenever this overflow happens, it will trigger an interrupt. So now we need to know where what to do. So let's go down here and do our interrupt service routines. And now we need to tell the compiler, hey, I'm about to write an interrupt service routine and I would like you to take the starting address of this routine I'm gonna write and put it into the vector table for the following vector. And now you're like, which vector? Timer, 
zero underscore b1 underscore vector. Once again, where did I find that unique name? It is in the, uh, well, it's in the book, but I found it for you. <laughs> it's called dimer zero b1 vector, and it's actually in the header file. So that's where I found it. I went and found it in, in the, <clears throat> not even just, not even, I don't know if it's a header file, but uh, like I, went, I go through the linker files, I go through the header files, and I go through these include files, and you find out where these things are defined and you get the real syntax for them. Okay. I've told it, here comes the starting address for a, a routine, but I'm, this routine is special, okay? It is an interrupt. And the reason that that's important is because I need you to treat this return from the interrupt at, with an RETI. Don't think this is a standard subroutine. So I do, now I entered just standard subroutine code. So ISR is the way I like to do it. So I know that I have an interrupt service routine. It's a TB0 overflow, and I'm gonna not gonna have any arguments passed in. That will put RETI at the end of this routine. If you don't do this, here's what's gonna happen. If you don't do that, it's just gonna take the starting address, absolutely, and it will put it in the vector table. And it will, when the interrupt fires, it will jump down here and it will execute this. The problem is that it will return using a subroutine return and it'll only pull uh, one thing off of the stack. RETI, return from interrupt, pulls the program counter and the status register. Subroutines only pull the program counter. So you don't use this, you crash your computer. Okay, what do you wanna do once we get in here? I am going to toggle the LED, so bit zero. So I'm gonna come in here and I'll go toggle LED one, and then guess what? If I, I need to clear the flag, because once I got in here, the flag was set, and if I don't clear it, I'll never, or actually, if I don't clear it, I'll immediately trigger another interrupt, and it'll never get out of this loop. Okay, so there's that, and let's just see what happens. Okay, so I'll save it, go ahead and do a compile, and let's see if, uh, how many syntax errors I have. Okay, we're running, we're running, we're running. And no errors. <laughs> okay, so let's now take a look at the board. Okay, so here's LED1, and now I'm gonna think about what's happening here. When I hit run, what's gonna happen? Well, it is going to fire an interrupt every 65.5 milliseconds. So it will turn on the LED, then 65 milliseconds later, it will turn off the LED. So it's gonna come on and off every 125-ish-ish, -ish, uh, about, yeah, 125-ish milliseconds. You can have eight of those per second. So this is gonna be hauling. This is gonna be flashing every, this is gonna flash eight times per second. Now that's fast, but it still is visible by our human eye. So let's take a look and see how fast this flashes or if it even does flash. <laughs> look at that thing. Yes. Okay, look at that thing. It is flashing like a maniac. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, one megahertz as the clock frequency. You triggered an interrupt and you toggled an LED. Congratulations, you did it. As always, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.